So now that you know, you guys can kind of do the liminal thing and like you said, sometimes pass, but yet not really always exactly wanting to, so that you can like be there and show it. And um, and and one of the things that I like to say about passing is I, I think it gets really there's there's a lot of issues wrapped up in in passing and even just the language of passing. And the, the reframe I like to use is a lot of people think about like trans women passing as women. And to me, uh, I, I'm not passing as a woman, I am a woman, I'm passing as cis. I'm passing as not trans. And, and so, you know, I, I definitely like being in spaces where it's okay for me to be seen as trans, and that's not a problem. Um, but like, I, I definitely, don't really like spaces so much where I'm being seen as male. Um, there, there's of course the, I, I think it, it was really amazing for me the first time I got sirred because I'm a butch woman rather than being <laughs> sirred because I'm a trans woman. And, and that I was like, I could get used to this. <laughs> How do you tell the difference? Well, Just okay, so, so, uh, so um, you know, being sirred because, Okay, a friend of mine once said, before I transitioned, people called me faggot. After I transitioned, people call me sir. When you're a trans woman and you get called sir, it's often a purposeful insult. So, like, you know, I remember when I was in a space of, of kind of presenting more femme and feeling like that's what I had to do, um, I walked up to a... a, a a desk at my school, and I was, I was wearing like a faux corset, and had my long hair like in in two braids, and and um, and pink pants, and a skirt over the pants, and I walk up there, and and the person calls me sir, and I'm just kind of like. There is absolutely nothing in my presentation that would lead you to believe that. And, and it's, it's like, you know, when you're being served as a trans woman, it's like, sir, oh, no, actually it's ma'am, huh? <laughs> Whereas if, if you're being served as a butch, I don't even have to say anything. They're like, oh, can I help you, sir? Or, oh, uh, I, I'm sorry, um, ma'am, yes. <laughs> and, and, and so, um, you know, that, that's kind of the extreme ends of the differences, but uh, kind of the, the, it's a big difference. <laughs> Can I just ask how you, like how this panel happened? I don't know if we mm. said at the beginning. Yeah, but so um, guys... <clears throat> uh, a, a friend of mine, uh, Kay Lamont, organized this panel last year for the Portland uh, Regional Butch Voices Conference, and I was a part of it then, and, um, and so uh, this year, uh, Joe contacted me and asked if we could do it again, and uh, Kay was not able to come, but I put it together. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of hard just <clears throat> going like, okay, who do I know who's a, a butch trans woman who can make it to Oakland? And, uh, <laughs> And, and it's, it's interesting kind of dealing with that because like there are networks and I'm kind of tapped into them but, um, but, but it's, it's really disjointed and I think like, like a predominant experience is, is feeling isolated and like you're the first. <laughs> and um, so yeah, it, 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 was, it was kind of interesting. Um, Bryn uh, runs the, uh, a, a Tumblr. For, for trans women butches. Yeah, MTF butches. MTF butches dot Tumblr. Yeah, because yeah. I found a, a Femi FTM um, Tumblr blog, but there was no Tumblr blog for butch presenting trans women, so I decided to just create one. And um, and so so that's how I, I connected with Bryn, and then for, for Twiggy and Una, we, we met on FetLife. Yes, yes I, I, I added her as a friend and sent her a message, it was just like, I've seen some of your porn, and I read your blog, and I think you're really smart and really cute. And then she was just like, hey, there's this thing happening in Oakland for butch trans women. There are things for butch trans women. That's not real. There's like nine of us that, and... 
we don't get anything good. And so, but she was just like, come to this panel. And I was, and I was just like, okay. And Una's my partner, and uh, Toby invited both of us at the same time. That's how, that's how we got here. Speaking of getting hit on in, in strange ways relating to, to gender, um, this is not not so much gender, but I was in class. I I just started um, started classes again this semester after a um, break. I was in class and we were doing this exercise where we it was an intro to LGBT studies class, and we were doing this exercise where we um, everyone in class um, paired up with the person next to them and interviewed each other, and then introduced the other person to the class. And one of the things that I told this guy to to say um, at like near the end of our interview was just like, um, oh yeah, and I'm a dyke, and like showed him my tattoo which says dyke. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's going through the list of things that we talked about talking about my, my major and how I'm from Indiana, and then he says, and in addition to having gorgeous eyes, she has a tattoo on her stomach that says dyke. I was just like, mm, this is such a non-plement. It's just like, you know I'm a dyke, you know it's tattooed on me, why are you hitting on me straight dude that's ten years older than me? It's just very strange. I'm wondering if you get hit on a lot by the uh, femme, gay, male, Um, um, the, the, when that has happened, it has been femme gay trans men who are really kind of like, I get the sense you're a dyke, I don't know if it's okay, but, and, and, and I've actually had a couple of, of, like, like on a Kinsey scale, I, I kind of place myself as a five, and it's kind of hilarious to me that the only guys I've hooked up with have also been Kinsey fives, <laughs> and um, and and I've, I've had that dynamic happen um, in a very positive way, um, but um, yeah, it's it's pretty much just been um, trans men who fit that um, description. Yeah. That's a similar experience for me. I have, I have, I'm poly, so I have multiple partners. One of my partners is a, is a femi, tranny fag, self-identified as such, but not, I mean, <coughs> you know, he calls himself a fag, I call myself a dyke sometimes, but like those, to me, I'm not, I'm queer above all else, so, you know, I use dyke as an aesthetic and he uses fag as an aesthetic, but we still, you know, we're still partnered. And then I have another trans guy partner who's um, more, uh, he's masculine identified, and then I have a cis woman partner as well. So like, I have, I have many, many um, kind of facets of partner because my identity is queer. So I've, I've been hit on by many types of people, and I, I have been hit on, you know, um, like femi gay boys have, have hit on me. And, like at clubs and such. So, like, who I get hit on, who I get hit on by is, you know, so disparate that it's just like I can't really tell why or when or for what reasons. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, I occasionally get hit on by um, femme guys, but they're usually queer and not gay. I didn't find, um, 
one of the people I'm dating is a, a queer femme guy. Um, and I, I was playing with him last night at the Citadel, which is a, a BDSM dungeon. And um, I was doing a rare thing where I'm, I was I was bottoming, and he, I was on a wooden, a big wooden X, um, restrained. St. Yeah, St. John's Cross. Um, and there was a mirror on the wall, and I, I looked back and saw him holding a flogger, like, s standing like this. And I, was just, I just looked back and I was just like, you know, you hold a flogger like a fag, and he was just like, yeah, well you take it like a dyke, and just like, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was pretty funny, but um, there are two, basically two groups of um, people that I tend to get hit on the most, um, which is funny because neither of these groups are really people that I'm into, and the people that I'm into I generally tend to be the one that's hitting on them, but it's like older straight men who are like twice my age, um, or like 10 years older than me that hit on me in creepy predatory ways and just somehow don't think that like the, that I have a dyke tattoo because I'm not into like men that are 10, 20 years older than me um, and then that there are like I get hit on by femme women that are like six years younger than me and like just barely coming out as gay and like very traditionally feminine presenting and like I'm just like okay you you don't look queer and you probably never actually even dated a woman um, and you're also a minor like this is <laughs> Like the, the, those are the two main groups of people, people, men that are way older than me and and women that are way younger than me. And it's really awkward having to like deny all these people constantly. And then like when there's people I'm actually interested in, they're not hitting on me. I'm like the one hitting on them. It's, it's, it's interesting. Maybe the, the younger women is a good sign that the, the next generation is going to be really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, none of them are bad people, it's just like... Well, I wouldn't count that one girl who was like, I'm 16 after you just explained how to be a sex worker. Oh god, oh yeah, yeah. I, I, someone messaged me on that line and was like, just like hitting on me and I, I said something and in the course of the conversation... They were like slut-shaming and like sex-shaming. Oh, I think that yeah, they, used the, they used the word whore in a derogative way, and I was just like, that's that's really offensive. I'm a sex worker. Um, I'm a prostitute. I I don't like the way you're using this word. And they're like, and then they, they were just like, whoa, that's bad. And so I stopped talking to her, and then she was, she started apologizing, and I was just like, okay. And she was like, actually, I'm like really economically desperate. I I need tips. How do you do this? And, she, and I was like, explaining to her how I got into it, into into prostitution, basically. And she she was just like, okay, blah, 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 asking all these questions. And then she was like, oh, I'm 16. Is that a problem? Um, is that going to affect my chances of getting work? And I was just like, whoa. Like, I just had this intensely sexually explicit conversation about being a hooker with a 16-year-old <laughs> because you lied on your FetLife profile. Like, it was probably to catch a predator anyway. Uh, just like, why? And I like stopped talking to her and blocked her and reported her on FetLife. Just like, she's so... has no idea of consent culture and just like, I'm gonna put you in danger without you even knowing it. 